In this video, we are going to try to pull together everything that we've been talking about for quadratic equations and how they apply to our graphs. And we're going to try and put it all together in one big set of notes. So first, uh, we have been talking about the standard form and the factored form. A general way to write the standard form without any numbers is ax squared plus bx plus c. And the way that we write the factored form without any numbers is a times x minus m times x minus n. Let's start with the factored form. First thing we know is that these two things, the m and the n, are where this parabola crosses the x-axis. So in this case, here, though it's going to be your x-intercepts. And what we found in previous and through the uh, previous videos and in the null factor law, the value is always opposite of what m is. So maybe this one over here, this might be m comma zero, and this one would be maybe n comma zero. So whatever values you have in here, it's gonna be opposite out this way. So maybe this one might be a plus uh, in here, so it's a negative on the negative axis, but we'll just say if we've got it in general form here, that it's going to be the opposite values as we approach, as we look at these right here. Additionally, we know that we have the, uh, the axis of symmetry, and let's put a dotted line for this. The axis of symmetry is always directly in the center of our quadratic. So this is our axis of symmetry, and the axis of symmetry is a horizontal or a vertical line. Symmetry is a vertical line that cuts this quadratic in half and makes it so if you folded it over, this side would line up exactly on this side. Now the axis of symmetry, have any vertical line like this, has an equation that is just simply x equals something. So in this case, with our factored form, that x is just the x value, the, the, this line is going to be the average of the intercepts. So m plus n divided by two. So anytime you see it in factored form, you could do n, m plus n divided by two, and that's gonna give you your axis of symmetry. Up here at the top, we have our vertex. And our vertex has both an x and a y value to it. Now, if we were to uh, think of this in terms of function form with inputs and outputs, sometimes we write, uh, instead of y, we might write f of x. We've looked at that before, so f of x is the same thing as y. So that might be another way that you see this. But I'm going to do this because that's going to help uh, fill in our vertex. Our vertex is always going to be the axis of symmetry, the x value is the axis of symmetry, so whatever we get for that, comma, then that same value substituted into the quadratic equation. So if I take this x value and I drop it in here, I take the x value and I put it in there, then that would be the same as putting the x values in here, and when I calculate all that, I'm going to get the y value out. So basically that just means substitute in the, uh, the axis of symmetry into your equation and you will get the, the y value out that corresponds with that vertex. That's all that this means. Um, let's go over to the standard form. Now, first thing you might notice is, oh, hey, look, ax squared plus bx plus c, that's got an a, and over here, this thing's got an a, and that is not uh, accidental. What that means is this a and this a are going to be the same. So if I were to draw, uh, write, if I had the equation for this parabola in either factored form or standard form, and let's say either maybe I factored it from here or maybe I expanded it from here, these a values will be exactly the same in both equations. So that's just a nice little check for you as you are working through these. Now the other thing we saw is that to find the x-intercepts, uh, using our standard form, we had a thing called the quadratic equation. I'm going to write it down here towards the bottom just because we've got a little bit of space. And we said that x equals, which means the x-intercepts, equals negative b over 2a 
plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, and all that's divided by 2a as well. And if you recall, this piece right here was actually the piece that gave us the axis of symmetry from our, uh, from our standard form. So you could also say that the axis of symmetry down here is x equals, I guess I could put it back in green, negative b over 2a. Let's, let's put that back in green so that way we can keep track of that so we know uh, where these different values are coming from. So the, x, the axis of symmetry here is negative b over 2a. Well, if you found the axis of symmetry this way or you found it this way, you can still find the vertex, whether it's opening down or opening up, by putting those values back into the equation. So again, we could say that the, the vertex is going to be the axis of symmetry and then put that value back into the function and you're going to get the vertex again. So uh, either one of these things you can use to find the vertex of the, of the parabola. And remember, we also know while we're on the vertex and this thing kind of opening up or down, we also know that uh, when we have an A value, uh, let's say if, the, if the, the A value, value, let's spell that right, is positive, then it's going to, the parabola is going to open up like a smiley face. And if the A value is negative, then the parabola is gonna open down. So as we can see here, this one is opening down. So in this case, our A value would be negative, whatever that is. Now, the last thing we saw was we had this part of our quadratic as well, quadratic formula. So this piece, if this is our axis of symmetry, then this distance from the axis of symmetry over here is going to be your positive square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. And this distance here is going to be your negative uh, square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So this quadratic formula gives you two things. It gives you the axis of symmetry and it gives you the distance, the distance from axis of symmetry to the x-intercepts. And so that just means if you've got your axis of symmetry, negative b over 2a, and you add that distance, you're going to get your, uh, your x-intercept and you're going to get your x-intercept. So this point here is also, for lack of a better, uh, a better um, way to write it, it's going to be negative b plus or minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a not plus or minus, let's say plus. Let's just make that negative b plus comma zero. So if we drop all of our, if we find all of our a, b's and c's and drop it in here, drop it in here, and we comma zero, that's gonna give us this, this x uh, coordinate, x intercept right here. And on the other side, it's, it's gonna be the very same thing, negative b minus square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a comma 0. So that's also going to give you this point here and this point here. So what we're finding now is that while this is a lot of information, we're basically breaking down our equations to find all of the same pieces, to find the, the axis of symmetry, to find the vertex or the y value uh, that go, corresponds with that axis of symmetry to find the x-intercepts, uh, to determine if this thing opens down or opens up. 
And there's one last piece that I did not include yet, and that is this right here. And this is our y-intercept. And the y-intercept can simply be found by using the c value, 0, c, from our, uh, from our standard form. So that c value is always going to be where this thing crosses the x-axis because if we put 0 in for our x's, that's going to cancel out, that's going to cancel out, we're left with just our c. So our y-intercept is right there as well. So hopefully this helps clear up a lot of the information that we've been uh, pulling together. We've been doing it all kind of piece by piece, learning about all the different little parts, uh, but we, def may, we may not have seen how it all fits together. But everything, again, is showing us all the same information. It's showing us how to get our x-intercepts, how to find that axis of symmetry or the vertex, and maybe even find the x-intercept. Some things you can find directly from here very easily, like this, like the y-intercept, um, and maybe the axis of symmetry. Some things you can find really quickly from the factored form, like your x-intercepts and maybe the axis of symmetry. From both of them, you can find all the information, but it's a matter of picking and choosing the right tool based on what it is you're specifically looking for. So. Hopefully that helps you, and um, sorry the video is a little long, but it should be it should hopefully provide you with a nice summary of everything that you need to know for your quadratics.